Hello everyone, this is Father Michael Irwin from St. Jude the Apostle Parish in Wauwatosa. It's my joy to be able to pray with you this morning and do this liturgy of the word for you to allow us to stay connected as a parish and can keep reflecting more and more on these scripture readings so that we can keep spiritually alive even during this time of COVID. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we center into this liturgy, let us remember our sins, but more importantly, remember the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you pour your love into our hearts. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we would abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now I'm grateful that the St. Jude's student is able to come over today to be able to proclaim our first reading for us. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor, and our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongue. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret the word of the Lord?
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word had handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you would realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to the custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is, of course, the third Sunday. Uh, this is the of ordinary time on here's Sunday, January 23rd. And what we see before us right away is Jesus proclaiming this acceptable year of the Lord. And, and we get to understand what this means. This means that everything's going to be different. Uh, they would do this like every seven years back in the olden days when Jesus was proclaiming this, that you would take a year to kind of re-restore everything back to itself. But of course, people wouldn't necessarily fully do that. But here, by looking at Jesus Christ, he, he could say, now that you've seen me, now you've looked me eye to eye, you're going to get it. You're going to get this acceptable year of the Lord, and it's going to become perfectly obvious to you. We see in our second, in our reading earlier today by the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians that Paul himself had this experience. If you remember earlier in Paul's life, Paul was, you know, pretty th proud of himself, pretty much not seeing others as equal to himself. And he would take that to such a point that because people didn't believe exactly as he believed, he would abuse them. He would oppress them and even was a party to their being murdered until Paul looked Jesus eye to eye and really got to understand the fullness of the whole thing, that he was able to realize how loved he was, how forgiven, how, who exactly he was supposed to be, and because he was so thoroughly healed and loved, he no longer had this need to be better than other people and be better to, than other people to the point of wanting to hurt them. Instead, what you see in that reading from the first letter to the Corinthians is this experience taught him that everyone is equal. Doesn't matter what your spiritual gifts are, doesn't matter what your role in the church is, it doesn't matter if you're really small person, large person, loud person, quiet person, it doesn't matter. You know, according to Paul, after seeing Jesus Christ eye to eye, the new thing is happening now. He sees everybody as equal to himself. And he comes to understand the glory of this kingdom of God. For Paul, he begins to fully understand what it is to have an acceptable year of the Lord. 
So that's really what our challenge is as well, is to understand the complexity of who we are and to understand the love that is within us so that we can see each other as being equal because it's so key to so much of the ministry that we're supposed to do. If people start detecting from us that we think we're better than them, that's going to certainly put a stop to it all. Why would they want to be a follower of Jesus Christ if in doing so it means they become better than other people or see themselves as so? What, what's so miraculous about that? You don't need to be following God in order to get that perspective. But instead, if they see in our eyes that we really love people, we try to understand them, we don't see ourselves as necessarily better than them, then we can understand the peace and tranquility that is possible in the kingdom of God. On this weekend, we consider um, all the possible ways that we can be able to address the issue of abortion. It's a common subject we talk about on this particular weekend. My favorite thing is to consider a pregnancy support center and being involved with them. And indeed, at St. Jude's, there's a big push in the back of the church. We've got a baby uh, crib there where people can contribute things that will help our local uh, pregnancy support centers here in Milwaukee. We started such a pregnancy support center in Beaver Dam. And as part of the original training for it, I got to see that how important it was to be present to people and really understand, respect, be empathetic to them, and to not judge. When if someone's coming through the door and their lives are kind of topsy-turvy, they don't know what they're going to do, they've got scared, they've got nervousness, they've you know, got confusion, they have maybe getting over some sort of other relationship, and here they have this pregnancy, they don't know what they're doing. They don't need to meet somebody who has all the answers. What they need to have is somebody who understands and doesn't judge them. And it's amazing the uh, training the volunteers, all the people who work at these pregnancy support centers get to end up being like this. And of course, ultimately what they need, ultimately what all of us need, is to be able to see Jesus eye to eye. To be able to comprehend how loved we are and therefore be so thoroughly healed that we don't feel a great need to be able to build ourselves up higher than other folks. But rather, we can enter into their woundedness without feeling threatened. We have a peacefulness about us that comes with really knowing our esteem, that we are God's delight. And we get that by being able to look into the eyes of Jesus Christ. Now, for all of these reasons, I'm gonna have the students step forward again to be able to offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray for all of us when we are in arguments that we will have the perspective to be productive. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all people who are homebound or for health concerns isolating from other people. May they be given creative ways to stay connected to family, friends, and the church. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the spiritual growth of our parish. May all of us have powerful experiences of the love of Christ and have trust in each other to talk about these gifts. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all students at our medical college and for all who work in healthcare during this stressful time. We pray to the Lord. Let us take all the prayers that have just been proclaimed by our student and bring them into our prayer with Jesus Christ as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
I thank you for being a part of this prayer time with us. We can feel your prayers. I hope you can feel our prayers for you as well. If in some ways we can help you, just let us know. Just call the parish offices and I'd be happy to come out and visit with you in your home and be able to bring you the Eucharist if that would be of any assistance. In any case, we send our blessings upon you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you go in the peace of Christ. Thank you.